Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Topaz Studio 2 again. Today, I thought we'd get into some black and white. I love black and white photography. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy it. And I'm calling this uh, tutorial today Black and White Workflow because I'm going to show you a bunch of different filters that we can use to achieve those really great black and white images inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. So filters that really work well together. So, hey, without any further ado, let's get started. I'm working out of Topaz Studio today, but you could work out of Photoshop as a plugin if you wanted to. But I just want to show you my uh, black and white workflow here. So let's pull up some filters here. So let's come up to Add Filter. And uh, this is the order that I recommend that you pull up your filters. We're going to start with a black and white filter, obviously, because we want to do a black and white. And then I would recommend after that a precision contrast filter and then a precision detail filter. These all work really well with black and white. And uh, the next filter is a dual tone filter, just in case you want to split tone your image, which is really popular in black and white photography, like, you know, that sepia look or whatever you want. And uh, lastly, I'm going to add a film grain filter, because sometimes to get an authentic looking black and white, sometimes you like to add that film grain. I know we we like to remove grain and things with uh, Topaz because we have the really fine products like Topaz Denoise AI and things like that. But I'll tell you what, sometimes in black and white, for artistic reasons, you want to add a little grain. So we're going to add the uh, film grain filter. Now, next what I'd like to do is let's save this out as a look. Now, all we need to do is come up here up here to the right hand corner of the interface click save look and let's give it a name and i recommend putting a number in front of it like if you have different uh work uh spaces or workflows just give them a number and they'll they'll be at the top of your list and i'll show you here in a second so let's give it a name i'll call this like four and we'll call this black and white black and white uh i'm gonna call it workflow I was calling my uh, looks uh, workspaces, but I kind of changed my mind on that. I think I'm going to call them workflow now. So I went ahead and went back and renamed my uh, workspace uh, areas to now workflow. And all you have to do is click OK. Now, I've already made this, so I don't need to click OK. I'm just going to click cancel. But if this is your first time, click OK, and that'll save it. And I'll show you. Let's get rid of all these filters right here. And let's go up to add look and you're going to find them under uh, your in look category under my looks and make sure sort by is set to all. And now let's uh, find that uh, black and white workflow right here. And as you can see, I renamed my other uh, I used to call these workspaces. Now I'm calling them workflows. To me, that made more sense, you know, upon thinking about it. So here's black and white workflow. So just click that. And click apply and when you do that you have a black and white image here and then there's all your filters here but we're going to start out by working with the black and white with the black and white filter you'll notice we have all these sliders uh with different color names uh on them like red orange yellow green aqua blue purple magenta and gray and think of it this way whenever you move a slider to the left you darken the tones if there's any red tones in the image they'll get darker if you move it to the right they'll get lighter and the same for all the different colors now here's your biggest friend here left clicking your canvas so you can if you left click it you can see the colors in your image so let's pick a color we want to work with first there's a lot of blue like in in these the beautiful ladies uh, sweaters here Okay, they both have blue sweaters. And so I'm thinking maybe on the sweaters, let's darken those up a bit. So let's go with our blue slider and let's take our blue tones and move that to the left. And let's build up contrast. You know, black and white is all about contrast, in my opinion. You want to get a lot of nice contrast in your image. So I'm going to darken up the blue, the blues in those sweaters. Now, again, left click your uh, canvas here so you can see. And you can left click anywhere on the on the image to, to the side of the image. It doesn't really matter. And let's take a look at another color here that we want to work with. And uh, let's see. How about the uh, the purple? The purples here. OK, so I'm going to go into the purple tones. I think I'm going to try moving that to the right and lighten up purple tones. Yeah. And see in, in the dress here and on, on this lady right here and here, it's adding some contrast. So I think I want to do that. I want to bring that, I want to lighten that up a little bit. 
let's see what other colors here we have some yellows and reds we have reds up in the sign so let's go to red what happens if i take the red to the right i think it's going to be the wrong way yeah see that doesn't look good right so let's move it to the left let's darken that sign up let's build up some contrast in there and also look down here in the bag down here uh yeah see that we can add some contrast there and even even on the skin tones there we don't want to go too too much i don't want to darken up the skin tones too much so i'm going to keep my skin tones you know relatively lighter but not but i do want to darken up the reds a little bit so i think that's good now what's another prominent color here uh green and yellow let's try green there's green here so let's take the green do we want to lighten the greens you know we could lighten the greens if we wanted to like in the in this uh bouquet right here let's uh let's see what happens if we take the greens to the left i might yeah I'm, i think i like that darkened a little bit now we can really darken that up if we want to and i do like some of that contrast in there so yeah i think i will darken those green tones and i think it looks really cool over here as well and i think the last color in here was like like yellow colors so let's try yellow let's see what we want to do with yellow do we want to darken down yellows see we get some nice darkness here in the wall here get some contrast here but i'm also darkening down the skin tone there i think with the yellow or i did orange sorry i screwed up i did orange let me let me double click that and set that back i meant to grab yellow sorry about that let's grab the yellow yeah that's not affecting her skin tone as much yeah when i did the orange see that i was i was wondering why i was pulling that skin tone down not a color i think i want to play with unless i want to lighten the skin tone up which yeah you know what i might i might just i might take that orange up slightly to the to the right and let's play with our yellow a little bit more here maybe right around there and now what i think i may want to do is take the um the blue tones so i want to darken those up anymore yeah, I might just darken the blue tones up a little bit. Now, let me zoom into this bike here. Now, this bike is kind of out of focus, but can you see this funkiness going around here on this bike here? Here's a really good tool to get rid of that, and that is this Suppress Artifacts right here, this slider down here. So I'm going to take this and move it to the right and watch what happens. See how that cleans that right up? So sometimes you'll get artifacts when you're really moving these uh, color sliders around, okay? So be careful there. So that has fixed that up. Now there's a detail slider in here and a brightness slider that you can uh, work with. Uh, the details, I'm not going to work with the details here because remember I added precision contrast and precision detail. I will use the precision detail to bring up the details and also some of the micro contrast will bring up some detail as well. But anyway, so I'm not going to play with this detail here. But if we needed some overall brightness, we could come here and get it. Now, there's also a color sensitivity slider here. If you move it to the right, it'll uh, make those colors more sensitive to the adjustments, if that makes any sense, or less sensitive if you move it to the left. So you can play with that. Think of that as fine tuning, and I think it looked pretty good. I might just move it to the right a little bit to make it a little more sensitive to the colors. Okay. So there we go. So there's the before and there's the after. So I think we're off to a good start. Next, we're going to start to play with the precision contrast. So we're going to click that and we're going to start with micro first. To me, a good black and white image is going to have a lot of nice contrast and a lot of nice details and things like that. So let's go ahead and bring up the micro here slowly here. See those little details start to pop out, which is really, really nice. So I'm going to bring that up. Let's work with our low contrast. And I love how the contrast is broken down to all the different areas like micro, low, medium, and high. And those are like areas like medium would be like, you know, a little bit larger areas c compared to low or micro. Micro would be those really small little like lines and grain and things like that. So that's the way that works. Now let's play with the medium here. And be careful, you can go too much, too far sometimes and get things really out of control. But look at that nice extra contrast I'm bringing up in this image. I love what's happening over here to this lady here. She's so sweet. And now let's go with the high. 
and bring up some of that high contrast. Yeah, maybe somewhere right around there. Let's look at the difference. Here's the before and here's the after. So see how that's building up. This image is turning out really nice. And then we also have like uh, lighting here we can play with if we want to. And the uh, equalization slider is really cool. So think of low, is that low equalization is adding more drama to your image. Uh, high is giving you more evened out lighting. And, and the medium is somewhere in the middle there. But the medium a lot of times is going to work nice. But if I wanted to even this lighting out a little bit, I would move it to the right. But I think medium looks really good. Now we don't have to play with uh, saturation or color or anything there because we're working with black and white. But that looks pretty cool. So next I'm going to go on to precision detail. I like to think of precision detail as like sharpening. And it's, it's kind of very localized sharpening in a sense where... We can, we can do overall sharpening in small details, medium details, and large details. Kind of breaks it up a bit like uh, we just did in uh, Precision Contrast with the micro, low, medium, and high. So let's play with the overall small details. So these would be little small areas like little lines and the grain and things like that. Like look at the pattern on the sweater here as I start to move up the overall small details. See that? See how the detail starts to pop? And some of these areas in the concrete here... I just love this scene. I just think it looks really cool. And look, look at the wrinkles on the face and things like that. And adds care. This woman has character. So let's, you know, we don't want to overdo it, but we want to emphasize some of that character and some of that detail. So a little bit goes a long way. And then you have the, uh, the boost if you need to fine tune it a little bit. But I think that looks good. Let's try the overall medium detail. Don't want to go too crazy here, but I do want to add some here. Okay, let's work with the overall large detail. Again, larger areas of detail. It's going to pull out. Got to be careful. Don't want to go too much. Let's see a before and after. Let me click the eye here. Here's the before and here's the after. But look at that detail. Now, if you felt you went so too far, you could take the opacity and you could start to pull this back and just ease that off a little bit. If you felt you went a little too far, I think it looks, well, I might have went a little too far. Let me just pull it back a little bit. But you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to go into shadow detail because the darker areas here, it'll pull out some of the detail in these darker areas. So let's go with the uh, shadow detail on the small Bring a little bit of that out. Yeah, just a little wee bit. And then let's go with the medium. Just a little bit there. I don't want to go crazy here. And then a little bit. Let's try the uh, large. Just a little bit there as well. Now, I felt I'm a little bit strong here. So here's the before again. And here's the after. But look at all that wonderful detail that's brought out. Now, let's go and take the opacity slider. Let me take it the whole way off. I like to do it this way, and I think it makes sense. And then just start to build it up slowly. And stop at the point where you think it's good. Because, you know, you spent all that work and time getting these sliders just right in the overall sh in the shadows. I didn't mess with the highlights. Didn't feel I needed to. But anyway... You don't have to go back and tweak each one of these sliders. Just go to the opacity and just, you know, ease it off a little bit and get it looking right. Because you don't want to have these over-the-top processed images, right? And I tend to overdo, but opacity sliders have really saved me because you can really pull back the effect a little bit. So now let's look. Here's the before and here's the after. Let's open this precision detail filter up one last time. And the only other thing in this uh, precision detail filter that we can work with is the lighting. So we have mid-tone shadows and highlights and a black and a white point. So sometimes those are good to, if you need a little bit more mid-tones or you need to open up your shadows or darken up your shadows, whatever you need to do in lighting, you can do it right here. But I'm satisfied with everything, so we're going to move on to the dual tone filter here. The dual tone filter is the same as a split tone filter and other uh, brands of software, but uh, Topaz call it dual tone. Now the dual tone filter and the film grain filter, I added these to our workflow look simply because sometimes we do want to tint our black and white images. Not always. We may like the image just the way it is and we wouldn't tint it. So you don't have to use it and you don't have to use the film grain either. But let me show you how this works. Okay, so... 
A lot of times I like to uh, tint my images like a sepia tint, kind of a popular look in a black and white image. So, so to do that, I would take the shadow color, I would drag the slider to the right, and you'll notice my image is starting to go blue in the shadows because this shadow hue is set by default to this blue color here. So I'm just going to drag this hue. You can make it any color you want. You can make it pink, whatever. I'm going to drag it over into the uh, warmer tones, like maybe like a 15, somewhere right around in there. And then I'm going to take the shadow color and just pull it back just so it looks kind of nice and natural, like a sepia image, right, right about there, I'm thinking. Okay, so you can see here's the uh, before and here's the after. So it's a slight uh, sepia tint in the shadows. If you want a real, it, not a realistic, but if you want your image to take on that old look to it, like it's an old image that's been around for maybe 70 years or so, paper tends to get yellow in time. So if you want to add some some aging to your image, uh, Let's open the dual tone back up and this time let's take the highlight color. Let's start to drag it to the right and uh, when it's to the left there's no tint added to the highlights but when you start to move it to the right you're adding tint to the highlights okay. And it's defaulted at 15 um, which is kind of in that sepia range right there. Now mine set at 14 so if I wanted to match it up I could just pull pull this back to 14 okay 14 15 that's going to work but then you just adjust the amount of color in the highlights that you want okay to maybe some i'm thinking somewhere right around there so it gives it more of that aged look and then you have this balance you could balance uh the the shadows and the highlights you favor more towards the highlights or more towards the shadows but if you double click it, it's right in the center, but you can play with that to fine tune it a little bit. But there you go. There's a little bit of sepia. And then if you want, if you felt you went too far, again, take the opacity and start to pull it back and just stop at a point that you like. Now let's see, here's the before and here's the after. And lastly, if you want to add grain to your image, we can work with the grain filter. Now let me click on the grain filter. Now by default, there's a tiny, tiny wee bit of grain in the image. If you don't want any grain in your image, just uh, make sure you have the film grain layer selected and just click the eye right there and that will disable the film grain filter. Or you could delete that filter if you wanted to, but you could just simply just shut it off if you want. So let's open up this grain filter here. Let me zoom in here. And let's go ahead and pull up the strength and look on these areas on the wall here. In fact, let me move this over here to the woman's face so we can start to pull this grain up and see that grain starting to come in the image. Now, you don't want to go too crazy because you add too much. So we can add some strength. Let's add a little bit of grain. And again, we're only doing this for artistic reasons. We have already uh, made the image look older by adding some sepia tone to it and, you know, adding the sepia tone to the highlights to make it look older. So we'll add a little bit of grain for that authenticity. And we can adjust the grain size by moving this to the right or moving this to the left. We can change that grain size and just get it to the size you would like. And I'm thinking maybe right around here looks looks good. And then we have a randomizer. It'll randomize the grain as you start to move this around. The grain will kind of get random on you. So it won't be all even, which is nice. It gives it a more natural look. So I highly recommend to add a little bit of randomization to the grain. And I think that looks really good there. But remember, if you decide you don't want any grain in your image, all you have to do is come to this eyeball and disable the effect and it's gone. Okay, so there you go. Now, if you're happy with your image and you want to save it out, you have a choice where you can come up here to file and you could save it as a project. And if you save it as a project, the next time you open up your TS2 file, your image will open up and you'll have all your layers intact. And if you decided, you know what, I don't want the film grain or the dual tone, you could shut those off or delete, or delete those two layers if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. And... Uh, and then you could go ahead and export it or do with it whatever you want. If you opened it up in Photoshop, just click accept and it'll send it right back into Photoshop. And it's just that simple. Well, there it is. My Topaz Studio 2 black and white 
workflow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Hey, if you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.